I'd like to talk to you today about a personal story about health empowerment through self-tracking and about the personal journey of how I went from being, as Ed mentioned, the lead systems engineer at, for prototype Mars rovers at NASA Ames to being um, the founder of, of and, and co-PI of the, the body track project at CMU. And it's really a story about the transformative power of explorable data and the difference between having the same data in a non-explorable manner and having the data in an explorable manner and how we, can, how we can harness this in lots of different ways to really change people's lives. My first experience with this was dealing with Viz, which is a virtual reality environment that we used at NASA Ames. And I actually used this just a little bit um, for dealing with the rover telemetry, but it was mostly used for planetary scientists to be able to understand what's going on with the, with the geology. And I hadn't really been encountered that until I was actually sent to work on the MER mission. Um, and, um, uh, and I dealt with, with the scientists who had all of this data, in, just you know, images of browsing through directories and directories of images in the planetary data system and getting frustrated. And I would see them and I'd say, you know, hey, we've got this other thing that's, uh, you know, and, and show them how to use Viz. And, and, um, and they would get really excited because the, what they really wanted to understand is how these details fit into the context in order to understand the geology and the, and the story of the water and the search for water on Mars. Um, having the data just dis in, the, in these sort of little chunks that, that didn't relate to each other really wasn't enough. Um, and there, there was one particular place that the rover was called Burns Cliff where this was really, um, uh, really came home to me. And this, is, this isn't as smooth as it was in real life, but you can see these are a succession of zoom-ins of that same data set um, going from being able to see the entire formation, be able to understand where these details are, and then if you look at these details, there's, there's these little um, kind of dark nuggets uh, that turned out to be really important because uh, these were, um, they believe, actually formed by, um, uh, formed in water. But they really needed to understand kind of the, the big picture and, and be able to see the detail both. And that's something that Viz could bring them that just browsing the PDS images could not. The next thing we did was a project um, of part of the Global Connection Project, which is a project that my, my husband, Randy Sargent, started uh, while we were still at Ames. And it's called the Africa Mega Flyover. And the Africa Mega Flyover was uh, Michael Fay took a, a little, little airplane and he flew low over Africa and he took all these amazing pictures. And the, the picture that, that, uh, that you see on the right is a picture of a, um, a market in Namibia. And you can actually, if you look at it in high enough detail, you can actually see there's people looking up at his plane. And, and, uh, and then there's, there's all these neat wildlife pictures and things like this. And the pictures themselves are somewhat compelling. But what we did is we actually mapped them onto Google Earth. So you can go and you can see the, the entire, um, of a entirety of Africa, and then you can see where these little, these little um, red um, airplane icons are. You can actually zoom in and go down and go down on the, those icons, and then you can see these, um, these pictures actually in context at the appropriate size mapped onto the Earth. And, and this, this was really, really cool because it brought a lot of this, this same sort of explorability to being able to understand some, a part of the world that, that I hadn't really had the opportunity to understand before. And then Katrina happened. And um, the people at Google apparently were contacted by the White House and they said, hey, you know, we've got all these, these thousands of pictures that Noah took from a plane of the, the disaster site and we need to understand them in context and we don't have a way to do that. So they actually called my husband and he said, oh sure, we'll have it done in half an hour and I'm looking at the uncooked pasta and I'm saying, I don't think it's gonna be a half hour. But in, in five hours we managed to do it. And, uh, and so we, we basically repurposed the stuff from the mega flyover. We had the, the images in, uh, actually mapped onto Google Earth and shortly after that actually had a VBR server which allowed you to, as you zoom down and zoom down, it will actually pull in the higher and higher res pictures. So um, this is a, um, an example of the highest res picture of, of the Superdome. And you can see that, that the base image um, uh, that looks all bright and sunny you know, was, was not that useful for, 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 for the, the people trying to, uh, to, to figure out the situation and decide where to deploy um, the, the assistance. But the picture that, that actually shows the current state was, was really, really useful. And so again, you know, they had these directories of thousands of pictures that Noah had taken. They were great pictures, but until they saw them in context, they were useless. Um, then the Pakistan earthquake happened. We did the same sort of thing for that. Um, you, can, you can see that the, here actually the, in, uh, mapping it onto the terrain is very useful here. So you can, you can see that there's um, uh, the, the, the landslides going down the, the slopes and being able to understand 
um, kind of you know where things are in, in, in an area like Pakistan that has a lot of vertical relief and doesn't have very good mapping. Um, that gave us an opportunity to, to you know, work with the international aid community and really get a feel for the power of this in order to change people's lives and, and, and try and help you know, figure out where the people were to rescue them in the first place. Uh, and then I got too sick to keep working. So just when it seemed like we were getting momentum all of, all of this, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't able to continue. And it was one of these things where the, um, all the tests come up negative, but yet you're debilitated. And so what do I do about this? Uh, I, you know, I wanted to keep working, and I couldn't. Uh, and you know, the, the medical system was, was, was more or less unable to help. Um, so I started doing what I call human systems debugging. I started taking pictures of everything I ate. Uh, I started playing around with, with uh, physiological sensors, keeping track of what I was eating, keeping track of weight, trying to figure out, is there something that I can do to be able to take some of the understanding of how the rovers were doing and, and the, the difference between expectation and reality and apply this to my own situation to try to, to try and figure out what's going on. And I was eventually successful, and I figured out that it was, it was what I was eating, and I have to not eat nightshade, which is tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, eggplant. And I figured all this out, but I was very, very frustrated by the tools that I had available. Um, and the same sort of need for being able to understand the context and then be able to see the details in context and kind of fluidly go in and out, I had that need for being able to do this process, and I didn't have it available. And it was very frustrating. And um, so what uh, my husband and I ended up doing is going and, and looking to see, are there, are there better things that we can do here? Are there tools that we can leverage? Um, are there better sensors that we can leverage? And we found that there were these pieces, but they were all disconnected. It was like the, 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 the pictures from PDS or the pictures from NOAA that were just sort of sitting around by themselves without context. And so, um, what we're doing is basically taking all of these data sources, both for the context and also for the physiological sensors, and we're bringing them together um, on a common timeline to be able to have people be able to, to better understand and explore their own situation and their own situ changing situation over time. Understand kind of uh, what's happening around them and the way that their body is reacting to that. Um, and let me show you an example. This is uh, data from um, the, the um, base station that we do. And the base station has, has a lot of channels of sensing. Um, the blue channel there is, uh, is light. The red is humidity. Uh, the black and green are uh, particulate monitor, which you can see it's uh, um, from, uh, from a company called Dylos. And uh, this is data that we got in our apartment in January in Pittsburgh. And you can see that there are places where the particulate counter is, is you know, you're sort of hanging around, and go, go to do, to do, and then whee, it goes up. And, uh, and it takes a long time to, to go back down to baseline. And it turns out that, um, uh, that a lot of these you can actually track to, to things that we were doing. And this is an example of basically going through and, and exploring. And it's, it's sort of like Google Maps in that you can, you can go and you can zoom and you can pan and you can go and explore. And what we found when we did this on these really big spikes is this is what happens when you use a cast iron grill pan to cook meat. <laughs> and you know, it, it had never occurred to me that that, that that had any impact on air quality. But through the ability to visualize the data and visualize the data over time and in context with the images, um, that gave us this the power that, that you know, we never had before. Um, there's another example of using this with physiological data. And uh, the, the picture on top is a body media armband, which is this little guy here. And uh, the one on the bottom is uh, the Zio sleep monitor. And you, you put it on your forehead, and it measures EEG. And uh, the, the graph there actually shows data from both of them. The top line is, uh, is metabolic uh, output, so the, the, the multiplier and basal metabolic rate for each minute of the day. Uh, the bottom line is whether or not you're laying down. So it's, uh, it goes high when you're, when you're laying flat, and it goes low when you're, when you're walking around. And then in the middle, it actually shows um, what's, what your sleep state is. And the orange is when you're awake. So you don't want to see much orange when you're, when you're trying to sleep. Um, and then the, 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 uh, the greens and the gray are, are the stages of sleep that you expect to go through deep sleep, light sleep, that, and uh, REM. And um, so this is an example of... Uh, um, of going through and um, exploring that data. Um, so here's a pretty nice night of sleep there. Um, a nap, another pretty good night of sleep. Took a little longer to fall asleep, but no big deal. Oh, what's that? 
oh, it looks like went to sleep really early that night, and then, oh, that's right, I got up and I was looking at email. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's keep going. Uh, oh, whoa, hey, what's, what's that? That looks really bad. Oh, and look at all that. Oh, that's right, that's the night that I woke up in the middle of the night and I was really sick. Turns out being violently ill is surprisingly metabolically active. Um, <laughs> um, so it sort of lets you go, go through and, and do this sort of thing and just kind of explore your life history and be able to look at it with, with these sort of signposts that the, that's the data collection, both from the contextual data and from the physiological data. And, and uh, I don't ha actually have an example in here now, but there's also um, uh, observational data that you can capture. So you can say things like, you know, uh, how, your, how your guts felt or how your head felt or, or what your mood was like or what your energy level was like, and graph those on the same timelines and be able to, to kind of zoom in and out and explore and, and use it to, to think about your own experience. I call this process data-assisted recall. Um, and I believe that it has the real potential for health empowerment. And you know, this is a point that I think other speakers have also made, is that data is not the goal. Data is a tool. But it's a very useful tool. And it's a tool that I think has a lot of potential to help us improve the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves. Um, and be able to write a better user's manual. So you know, it, it, what's, it's not necessarily obvious just kind of thinking about the, the, the way that, that, that you remember kind of the, re remember your experience is kind of fuzzy. And it's hard to kind of remember when certain things happened and when other things happened. But when you're presented with this data in, a, in an explorable sort of timeline, you can see, okay, here's what I ate here, and then uh, what was happening after that. Oh, right, you know, look, look, kind of look at the, the relationships in time between what you were doing and how you were doing, and be able to think in a more sort of deep way about, hey, you know, maybe this thing affects me in some way that, that I wasn't expecting. And you know, we, we all expect that, uh, that you know, veggies are good for you, but for, in my case, certain ones were not. And it wasn't until I sort of looked through at the actual experience and the actual patterns of experience that I was able to understand that. And I think that there's a lot of situations like that, things like migraine triggers, asthma triggers, um, all sorts of strange food interactions, um, all sorts of um, stress interactions between things that are going on and things that happen. And a lot of that impacts, impacts us in ways that we don't necessarily understand ahead of time and that we don't necessarily understand uh, based on kind of the, the default user's manual that we're given by our society. I think that, that there's a lot of information there that maybe isn't accurate for anybody, but in particular, if you have these sort of um, sensitivities that no one, that there's no t diagnostic test for, how else are you going to find this than to be able to kind of explore your own um, time and explore your own situation and think about these things deeply. And I think that, that you know, just trying to do this on paper and trying to do this mentally, um, you end up with this, this kind of stressful situation where you're kind of juggling plates in, the, in your head and, and, and it gets more and more stressful over time. But the, if you have these sort of tools where you can, you can link that to the, to the visuals and be able to, do, to explore it, I think it can, can really um, make this sort of process a lot more powerful and a lot more productive. And the, it, with BodyTrack, what we're trying to do is to optimize the potential for insight per unit annoyance. And, um, and, I, and I, you know, I, I don't pretend that we're there yet, but we're making progress. Uh, we've been working with people. We, we just did a, a deployment in San Francisco with 10 participants. Uh, using devices and using body track and, and going through this process um, um, with, with coaching. So uh, my, my new role of quant coach. So I uh, helped them refine what they're, what they're doing and, and, uh, and look at the data and understand the relationships between the data and the experience. And, um, and I think that, that we really onto something, something useful here. And um, you know, we're, we're only one part of it. There's a whole ecosystem of, of folks working on this. Um, and the quantified self movement is um, is really important, I think, as, as a focus point for people to get together around these ideas. And I think that, that as time goes on, that we'll find that this makes a bigger and bigger difference in people's lives who right now are not really being particularly well served. Um, and you know, I, I hope that this will, um, uh, this will relate, result in a lot less wasted human potential and allow people, like I was able to, come back and be able to, to bring back things to, to our society. Thank you.